Uh, this video is for parents and students, and it's going to be a bit of a warning. I want to show you what happens if you make an you know, inappropriate joke. It gets caught, it, it goes public, and the Harvard Admissions Office finds out about it. Uh, this over here is a fake Harvard admissions, uh, sorry, a fake, fake Harvard rejection letter uh, written by somebody named Molly McGinn. And she, in this fake letter that she written to herself, maybe just to get her friends to laugh or whatever, she has all kinds of just silly jokes and inappropriate stuff over here. Uh, she she has this line from supposedly from the the committee. We also suggest obtaining recommendation letters from teachers or trusted mentors, not my number four side ho Derek or Chief Keefe, who submitted a picture of a dinosaur drawn in crayon on a rolling paper. Now, for some parents who might not be up to date, a rolling paper is paper used to roll a marijuana cigarette. If somebody's drawing a dinosaur on one, that person's probably high. Uh, a side hoe is not like your primary girlfriend or boyfriend. It's your secondary or tertiary. And the number four side hoe, Derek, would be her you know, fifth boyfriend, basically. Now, what happened to, to this student is this letter got out. It got picked up by the Huffington Post as being funny. It got shared all over the country many, many millions of times. And so this thing that she was just saying in good fun to her friends, it got out. So what, were the, what was the end result? The end result, she got in. You know why? Because this was funny. It was clever. It was different. It was irreverent. It also made her a figure of national significance. That's one of the biggest criteria for Harvard. If you are a figure of national significance, you're almost guaranteed to get in. I bring this up because I want to talk about a common error that one or two students make every single year. A great essay is going to be bold. This wasn't her essay, by the way. I mean, we can assume that her actual essay was also probably funny and irreverent. This was just a joke she told that got out. A great essay is going to be bold. It's going to be insightful. It's going to be clever. It's going to be different. It's not going to be this like tedious, boring, seventh grade style writing. It's not going to be overly timid. It's not going to be fearful. It's going to be the opposite of that. Every year, one or two students make the following mistake. They've written a great essay. Just a fantastic essay. That essay is engaging. It's vivid. It's not, it's not even pushing the boundaries like this. It's, it's exciting. It's funny. It has all the great elements, all the things that people work so hard to do. Uh, it might be an essay of why you want to go to Harvard. It might talk about specific research at Harvard. It might tell, tell some cool anecdotes. It might make some personal connections. It might talk about some of your backstory. And at the last minute, literally the last minute, I mean like 1159, they rewrite an essay, just a terribly bad essay. An essay that's like, the three reasons I want to go to Harvard are it has great academics, it's in a great city, and the student body often go on to do successful things. And then they're saying, here are the great academics. Just, just terrible. Cliche, boring, tedious writing, and they end up submitting that. Now, right now, you're sitting here because you're calm, and you're saying, well, only no one would ever do that. Well, people act differently under fear. Under high levels of anxiety and fear, people make mistakes. And the specific mistake that they always make is they act too timidly. They don't take, they, they, they imagine risks that aren't even risks, and they refuse to take the not risk. Listen, we're not going to let you take any actual risks. We don't, because it's never necessary. You can always eliminate risk and have the same level of reward. Why bother with the risk? But So when I say risk, I mean anything at all interesting. And so, so they end up writing this very fearful essay, submitting it, and of course not getting in. So they would have gotten to their dream college, they send in this nonsense, and they don't get in. But why does that happen? Well, let me, let me put this in, in, in a little bit of perspective. You have around you people who are afraid of their own shadow. Maybe your parents, maybe your grandparents, maybe your next door neighbor, I don't care, maybe your friends. And we well, might also have a couple people who are out there to sabotage you, but we won't assume the worst just yet. The people who are fearful, their way of approaching life is through extreme timidity, not taking any real risks, imagining risks that are not actually risks, and not taking those either. Basically making themselves as timid and invisible as humanly possible. That is not, and they're getting, when they advise you, they're going to advise you to do the same. Not because they hate you, but because that's what they've done in life and you know they think it's worked. That is always the wrong answer here. 
you're going to feel tempted to do this. You're going to feel tempted to listen to them. Why? When people are afraid, they listen to fearful people. You're going to be anxious. You're going to be nervous. You're going to be afraid. And you're going to want to listen to those people. Those people are wrong. They might be right about other things in life. They're wrong about this. We're never going to let you take an actual risk. We're never going to push the, the boundary farther than it needs to go. And we know exactly where that boundary is. The, the, uh, the articles that I'm sure many of you have read where so-and-so had their admissions rescinded, it's, that's for stuff that is so incredibly racist, massively offensive, not lighthearted joking like this. I mean, just so far over the line. That's not this. That's not something... This is not even close to, to, to anything like that. If you want to look that up, by the way, feel free to look it up. I'm not going to post it here. It's way too far for anything I would post in one of my videos. But if you want to look it up, you can type in, you know, the Harvard memes that got rejected or racist comments that got rejected. Read the comments and understand that's what's considered offensive, not this, and certainly not anything in your essay. At the last minute, when you're feeling that kind of fear, you can do a couple things. First, you shouldn't be submitting your essay last minute. You should have submitted it weeks before. If you're feeling that fear, contact me immediately and we'll see if there's any legitimacy to that fear. And there might be. And there's always a possibility. I mean, probably not, but there is a chance. And no matter what, if you, no matter what, do not write an, a secondary, super boring, tedious essay and submit that instead. All that's going to do is guarantee that you don't get in. If your essay is invisible, you will get rejected. This is not like in chemistry class at school where if you're for the quiet kid, the teacher's going to like you. If you're the quiet kid when you're applying to Harvard, you will guaranteed, get definitely 100% get rejected. So make sure your essay is bold, vivid, noticeable, exceptional, exciting, all those great things, and don't replace it with a nonsensical, timid, weak, boring, useless essay at the last minute.